This is the video lesson for what is acceleration. The learning target for this lesson is, I'm learning to define acceleration as the change of velocity over time and to distinguish between average and instantaneous acceleration. The success criteria for this lesson are, I can define acceleration, I can recognize acceleration as a vector, I can identify average acceleration, and I can identify instantaneous acceleration. So what is acceleration? Acceleration is a change of velocity over time, which we can think of as delta V over delta T. So delta V we can think of as V minus V naught. So this is the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by t minus t naught. So the final time minus the initial time. So that is how we can think of acceleration. So our final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the, the final time minus the initial time. We can think of this as the average velocity, or excuse me, the average acceleration. And our units, our standard units for acceleration. So if we have meters per second, meters per second, this is our velocity. And we're dividing it by time. So in seconds, so we have meters per second divided by seconds. We end up with meters per second squared. So meters per second squared is our standard units for acceleration. We can also think of this as meters per second per second, which we have here as, so meters per second divided by seconds, which get us meters per second per second, which is how we get this meters per second squared. All right, let's talk about acceleration as a vector. So since velocity is a vector, the change of velocity, which again, remember, is acceleration, is also a vector. So we have some examples here of cars uh, going in different directions. Uh, in A here, we have a car going to the right and its velocity vector is going to the right and its acceleration vector is going to the right. So the car is speeding up. <clears throat> so when the acceleration vector and the velocity vector are pointing in the same direction, so acceleration and velocity are in the same direction, we're speeding up. So in A, the car is speeding up. In B, the velocity vector is pointing to the right. The acceleration vector is pointing to the left. In this case, when the acceleration vector and the velocity vector are pointing in opposite directions, object is slowing down. So acceleration is changing the velocity. So or represents the changing velocity. So the car here, because the acceleration vector is pointing in the opposite direction of motion, the car is slowing down. Here in C, the car is moving in the opposite direction. So the car is moving to the left now instead of moving to the right. So it's got a negative velocity. So velocity here is negative. In A and B, the car has positive velocity because it's moving to the right. In C, the car has a negative velocity. Um, in C, it has a positive acceleration, but it's still slowing down because the 
acceleration and the velocity are pointing in opposite directions. In D, we have a negative velocity and a negative acceleration. And it is speeding up in that negative direction because they, the acceleration vector and the velocity vector are pointing in the same direction. So the car is speeding up in a negative direction. All right, we're going to watch this really good animation of a marble rolling down this hill on this track as it goes around on the straightaway and then around the curb and then another straightaway. So watch the vectors. So there's a velocity vector, which is in blue, and the acceleration vector in green. So watch how the vectors change as it goes down the ramp and on the straightaways and around the curb. So you can see the velocity vectors were in the same direction. Now they're in opposite directions as it slows down. The rule of thumb, when an object is slowing down, the direction of the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the object's motion. All right, let's watch that again, and we'll try and pause it at different places. Okay, so here you see the status is that the marble is speeding up. So the velocity vector and the acceleration vector are in the same direction. Velocity vector is small right now because the marble doesn't have a lot of velocity. Here you can see towards the bottom of the ramp, the velocity vector is a lot longer, meaning that the marble is going a lot faster than it was at the top of the ramp. And the acceleration vector is still the same length. The marble is speeding up down the ramp due to the gravitational force pulling on it. So the acceleration vector is not getting any longer. It's just as long as uh, it's, it's accelerating based on the force of gravity. So now as it goes on the straightaway, notice that the acceleration vector is in the opposite direction of the velocity vector, meaning that the object is slowing down. The marble is getting slower now because of friction on the ramp, on the, on the track. So the velocity vector and the acceleration vector are pointing in opposite directions now, meaning that the marble is slowing down. Now you can see as it goes around the curve that you can tell that the, you can see that the acceleration vector is pointing into the center of the circle. This signifies that as a, as an object goes around a circle or a curved path, the acceleration points into the middle of that curved path. Uh, remember that because velocity is a vector, it has both magnitude and direction. So the size of the vector here is not changing. What's changing is the direction of the vector. Uh, and the, the acceleration vector pointing into the middle of the, of the curve signifies that direction change. All right, and here it's made it around the curve and is back on the straightaway. And so the status shows that the, that the marble is slowing down. You can see that the acceleration vector is pointing again in the opposite direction as the velocity. And the velocity vector is a little bit shorter than it was before. And now it's still slowing down. The acceleration vector is pointing still in the opposite direction as the velocity vector. The velocity vector is getting sh smaller and smaller. And here, very small velocity vector. And then finally, the marble has stopped and there's no velocity vector or acceleration vector. All right, let's talk about average acceleration versus instantaneous acceleration. So instantaneous acceleration is the acceleration of an object at an instant in time. We find instantaneous acceleration using a motion sensor or a photo gate. So we've used motion sensors before in class. We haven't uh, used a photo gate before, but we will. And average acceleration is the acceleration of an object over a period of time.
I'm going to find the average acceleration by averaging acceleration over time, which makes sense. All right, here's a couple of graphs showing acceleration. On the left graph, A, you see the acceleration over time, and then you see a, dark, a black line which shows the average acceleration. So the purple line is showing instantaneous acceleration, uh, take measurements taken um, at particular moments in time. So if you wanted to measure the acceleration at a particular, at an instantaneous acceleration, you could measure the acceleration at one second, and it would be uh, a little bit under two, uh, or maybe right about two meters per second squared. And if you took the average acceleration for this whole graph, uh, it would average out to be a little bit below two meters per second squared. So it's pretty close to the to the instantaneous acceleration just about everywhere along the entire graph. If you look at B, on the other hand, B's accelerate the acceleration at B is very different all over the place. So it would be hard to take an it would be hard to find an average uh, acceleration for for the graph at B. Um, the easier thing to do would be to find an instantaneous acceleration, which you could find for different for different sections. Um, you could find the you could find the average acceleration for different sections as well. So you could say the average acceleration for the time period from one from zero to one second would be three meters per second squared. So from here to here, the average acceleration would be three meters per second squared. Or from one second to three seconds, the average uh, acceleration would be minus two meters per second squared and so on. If you wanted to try and average the acceleration here, you would take the accelerations uh, for each little time interval uh, and just do a just do a mean to figure out what the average acceleration is. It would probably be somewhere somewhere in in this range, I would imagine, somewhere around two. Um, meters per second squared. All right, everybody, keep asking questions. It's how you learn new things.